A student once asked me, Professor, do you ever regret studying literature? I think people who study literature feel too much. Do you ever get tired of feeling too much? I don't necessarily think that everybody who studies literature experiences the world in exactly the same manner or reacts to the things in exactly the same way. But my student definitely had a point. I have always loved books. I love literature. And I tend to read the world as though it were a narrative. I love people's stories. I analyze. Sometimes I overanalyze. Sometimes I overthink. Do I regret studying literature? Absolutely not. Actually, I think the literary path was definitely for me. I'm actually becoming increasingly convinced in the importance of literature as a tool for empathy. Now, for the purpose of this particular presentation, it's really important to define empathy first. How many of you here are students? Any students? All right. So you know when a friend goes to an exam, maybe you are the friend too, and you study really hard, and you do everything the professor tells you to do, and then you walk into the exam, and you do it, and you walk out, you feel cool, you did kind of well, and then you get the grade. And it's like a scene out of a scary movie. This was not me. I did not write this. The grade's really bad. Now, if your friend tells you they experienced this, you might react in several different ways. If you have sympathy for your friend, you're like, oh, I'm really sorry. Maybe you have a piece of chocolate. Life will be good. But if you have empathy for your friend, you will feel what they feel. You will be able to put yourself in their shoes. According to the Oxford Dictionaries Online, empathy is the ability to share and understand the feelings of others. It's a step further from sympathy. So why do we need empathy or sympathy, and why is it significant? And what in the world does literature have to do with empathy? Not any kind of literature we're talking about here. So don't run to the first bookshop and just pick up any book. It's literary fiction that's very important. Literary fiction, let's think of Naguib Mahfouz, Anton Chekhov, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, those authors who have transformed the world and changed the way we perceive it. That book that you read that is complex, that is about human nature, that's literary fiction. And literary studies have shown, and actually researchers have shown, that literature is capable of increasing one's capacity for empathy, one's capacity of understanding others. Actually, there's an article in the Scientific American written by Julianne Shiat, who actually says that research was conducted by David Kidd, two psychologists, two researchers, sorry, David Kidd and Emmanuel Castano. What they did was they did a project that involved social children and they gave them literary fiction, they gave them popular fiction, and they gave them non-fiction. And they found that the children who read literary fiction, you know, literature like Mahfouz, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, etc., actually had a higher capacity of understanding others. Now, since this is a talk about literature, let me tell you a story. And before you judge the woman in that story, let me tell you the full story and then think what you feel about her. I'm going to tell you a story that was written in 1894 by an author called Kate Chopin. Kate Chopin was an American author, and when, in 1894, she published this short story, it was highly controversial. So here's how this story goes. The story is called The Story of an Hour, and it literally takes place over the span of one hour. It starts off with the, uh, the narrator telling us that Mrs. Millard, has a heart problem. She has heart trouble. Mrs. Millard's sister needs to tell Mrs. Millard that she's just found out that Mrs. Millard's husband has died in a railroad crash. Now, of course, that kind of news is very difficult to give to anybody, let alone a woman who is afflicted with heart trouble. So Josephine has to do it, so she tells her. Now, Mrs. Millard reacts by basically saying, oh, sorry, by reacts by being really upset, visibly upset, she's hysterical. You don't need to worry about this, by the way, you can just focus on me, right? She's, um, she reacts by being visibly hysterical, and um, it's dramatic, it's intense, and then she goes into her room, and this is the interesting part, she sits on her chair, and she suddenly feels free. Yes, a woman has just lost her husband, and she suddenly feels free. 
She feels, and I quote the text, free body and soul. The birds are chirping, life is lighter, and it's a lot better. Now, when I was 18 years old and I read that story for the first time, I was like, what is wrong with that woman? She just lost her husband, and there she is feeling free. Let me tell you the rest of the story, because it gets interesting. So Mrs. Millard leaves her room feeling like victorious and free and walks downstairs, and guess who's at the door turning the key? Her husband did not die. Mrs. Millard looks at her husband, and she collapses, and she dies of, quote, a joy that kills. Yes, that's the story. Now, what makes this literary fiction, and why do we need to read that fiction? We often tend to, cri to apply criteria or dichotomies to things. A person is either good or bad. They're happy or they're unhappy. They're strong or they're weak. So what is Mrs. Millard? Is she a bad person because she reacted that way to her husband? Well, let's take a step back. 1894 in the United States, women did not have the freedoms or rights they have now. A woman was, and in the story, she's, she's referred to as Mrs. Millard. She was always her husband's wife. There was no identity that she could have that was separate from her husband. So her reaction really was her longing to have a life of her own, a life of her as an individual. Now, literature sometimes will exaggerate things. I don't necessarily think that she wanted anything bad to happen to her husband or that she's an evil woman, but she simply experienced something that was very foreign at the time. Now, if a story like this is not enough for you or the love of literature is not enough for you to actually go and pick up the right kind of book soon, let me tell you this. If you're a student, you do a Google search on anything that relates to finding the right job, finding an internship, whether it's Forbes.com or Fortune or Bloomberg, you'll always find a pattern. Employees are looking for people who can communicate, who can interact with others, and they're looking for people who are good, basically, communicating with other people. A key to all of this is empathy. Empathy allows us to better understand others and to go beyond ourselves. The path to empathy is a wonderful one. It goes right through the heart of literature. It takes courage for us to change the way we do things. And, so, and actually, I think literature is kind of a fun way to change the way we do things. Now, if you're thinking, what if I pick up a sad story and it makes me sad? I'll tell you this. Life is all about a spectrum of emotions. We can't have experience most of the time without emotion. And we can't have emotion without experience. So pick up that book that makes you sad. Pick up that book that makes you happy. Read that text that confuses you. Because at the end of the day, you're going beyond yourself and you're connecting with someone else. Essentially, you're transcending yourself. And I truly believe that if you embark on that journey, you will become much more than who you were when it started. Thank you. Thank you.